Hello everyone, welcome back to this YouTube channel and today I'm really proud for two important reasons. Uh, today we are uh, we are we are starting the new playlist and it's related with advanced power system analysis okay this is the next level uh, in this place list uh, we will start to talk about many very important um, uh, power system analysis that they are not traditional okay um, we are talking about uh, uh, advanced dynamics including renewables and so on okay um, and today I say that is a double uh, interesting day very happy day because we are starting advanced power system analysis a course that I will be teaching very soon and also I have an, a guest speaker today I have uh, professor Jose Luis Reda uh, he is a associate professor at Delft University uh, in Netherlands and today he will mm, talk about a small disturbance a small signal rotor angle stability what we typically know as eigen analysis eigen value analysis okay um Jose Luis Reda, Professor Jose Luis Reda is very famous. He is very prolific. He is an extremely good scientist, and especially he is a very good friend. Uh, we have been collaborating for many years, and he is author, editor, and co-author of many uh, book, book chapters, uh, journals, papers, and so on. As you can see in this slide, he is a uh, editor in in few books. Over there, you can see at least four different books. In 2014, uh, Jose Luis Reda and myself, we published the first ever book about the excellent power and uh, uh, the excellent power factory, okay? Uh, an application for power system analysis. Then in 2018, it was published as advanced smart grid functionalities based on power factory. Um, I think in 2017 we published uh, Dynamic Vulnerability Assessment and Intelligent Control for Sustainable Power System. This is a very interesting book, a very, um, very interesting book that we will use in, in this uh, series. Uh, um, it's a IEEE Wiley book. Uh, we are very proud about this book. Most recently, uh, Professor Rueda and his team they publish a book called Probability Reliability Analysis of Power System Analysis, a student introduction, and I have the opportunity to collaborate with them, okay? Well, um, Professor Jose Luis Reda, uh, he is an academic at Q Delft, Delft uh, University of Technology. He is associate professor, tenure, uh, of intelligent and electrical power grids at the Department of Electrical Sustainable Energy at Delft University of Technology at Delft, Netherlands. He is also chair chairman of the working group on modern heuristic optimization under the IEEE PES analytic methods in power systems committee. He is uh, also associate editor at the Swarm and Evolution Computational Journal, Sevier, with an impact factor of 3.893. Since October 2017, he is member of the Technical Committee of Power and Energy System of the International Federation of Automatic Control. He is a very prolific author with many journal publications, as I said before, many books, and especially he is a very good friend. Uh, today he will be talking about a very important topic for advanced power system analysis, and that is uh, a small disturbance or a small signal rotor angle stability. Um, there is no nothing more to say. Just uh, please, Jose Luis, take on and deliver your lecture. Thank you for the invitation. Today, I will speak about the small signal stability of a power system. 
and its analysis from the point of view of a linearized representation of the dynamic model. We have two parts. One about basics of uh, this analysis with a linearized representation. And secondly, an extension to the problem of damping control. So the small signal uh, stability or small disturbance or triangular stability is related to the analysis of the dynamic behavior of a power system when a small or gradual perturbation occurs in the system. An example of such perturbation is a gradual increment or decrement in the lot demand. There are two ways to approach this analysis problem. One is based on a model or analytical equation based method and the second could be by checking at what happens or what we can uh, discover from a signal record that could be generated by offline simulations with a model of the system or from signal records. So in the first case we are taking our uh, differential right equation describing the nonlinear dynamics and converting it into a linearized representation around a specific equilibrium point. In the second case, we are fitting a model to estimate the characteristics of the dominant oscillations. One example of these methods is the prone analysis. Uh, to visualize, that is in the first case, so-called state space representation, and the second case, fitting a series of weighted uh, exponential functions. In the first case, so as I said before, we take the nonlinear model of the system that has the state equations and the equations of the output or algebraic variables. And then we convert this into a linearized representation or a state space representation, which has a set of matrices that can be used to assess the small signal stability of the system. These matrices are also uh, known as Jacobians of the system, which reflects different types of relationships. So for instance, matrix B indicates the relationship between the inputs, the changes in the state variables, whereas matrix C relates the, the, um, the implications between changes in the states and output variables. Among these matrices, uh, the key matrices in the, matrix in the analysis is the state matrix or matrix A in this example. The eigenvalues of this matrix can be real or complex, and for the case of complex, they come as a pair of conjugates and they define the oscillatory modes of the system, which could mean that we could have a well done oscillation or sustained oscillation or a negatively damped oscillation. From these complex again values, we can extract the frequency and damping ratio, that means frequency from the imaginary part and damping ratio from the re real part and the magnitude of the mode to characterize what is happening with our oscillation, what frequency and whether it's growing, being sustained or decaying, depending on where it lies in the complex plane. Uh, from linear algebra, we know that any matrix from which we can extract eigenvalues also has right and left eigenvectors. Each eigenvalue has a set of right and left eigenvectors associated to it. So let's start with the right uh, eigenvectors. In this example, we see the right eigenvector of a given eigenvalue, which has a number of n elements. Each element is usually a complex number and these elements in our case are related to the state variables which are sorted according to the order of the, the differential equations that were defined to build the state space representation. We have a matrix of right eigenvectors and each column will be in this case associated to a given eigenvalue. Then uh, these, these right -hand vectors are used to do some analysis concerning with the shape of the oscillation. So the 
it would take some elements of the right hand vector, like for example, the elements or entries related to the rotor speed deviations. We look at these complex numbers, the magnitudes will indicate us the extent of the excitation of uh, oscillations related to the rotor uh, speed deviations, whereas the, the angle will indicate us the angular displacement between these oscillations. If we monitor this with a, uh, by, or by checking the measurements of the rotor angle of these machines, we will check these displacements, so we'll accept these displacements are as inferred from these uh, entries of the uh, right again vector. In this example, if we plot these uh, entries in the complex plane, we will see that the uh, two generators again oscillate against the other two in this example. Uh, for the case of the left again vectors, they also have a number of entries or elements that uh, are also related to the order of the system or the number of eigenvalues. And the same, the sequence. It's like in the right again vector related to the sequence of the uh, state equations. And we also have a matrix of left again vectors. Because in this case, they are row eigenvectors. vectors. We have in the matrix the transpose representation. The, by taking uh, entries of the left and the right again vectors and multiplying them, we can get the so-called participation factor, which is a dimensionless unit. They measure the extent of participation of a given state in a given uh, oscillatory mode. Uh, they can also be viewed as a sensitivity of the eigenvalue to a diagonal element of a state matrix. Um, and then, as I said, the, this product is by taking the corresponding entries in the left and the right eigenvectors. We also can define a matrix of participation vectors. That when that each again, each uh, participation vector is the, obtained by uh, the corresponding right and left eigenvectors of a given uh, uh, oscillatory mode or eigenvalue. In this, in, you have here again an example in which we took the uh, rotor speed entries of a participation vector associated to a given dominant oscillatory mode, for instance. And then uh, if we check the magnitude of this, this will check, this will tell us about the extent of the sensitivities of this uh, uh, eigenvalue with respect to the rotor speed deviations. And we see, it, for instance, that generators 3 and 4 are the most dominant, followed by generator 1, whereas uh, a change in the rotor speed by, for instance, doing some damping control will not be too significant. So this is a uh, qualitative approach to initially screen candidate generators for addition of power system stabilizers. So um, how to do these calculations of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors? We have uh, two methods. Our method in which we compute all eigenvalues of the system. And this is usually feasible for relatively small size systems with up to uh, approximately 800 states. So we can get all modes, real and also the oscillatory modes that are associated to the state matrices of such a system. Whereas for larger size systems, there are different types of methods in which only a small set of the eigenvalues, usually the most dominant, are calculated. These are of different type of approaches. For instance, are knowledge methods which will iterate or do a, or will perform an iterative search around a starting point that the user will give in a given region of the complex plane. Will be used to get, for instance, a set could be five, ten again values, but cannot be the full number of again values because we will get some uh, estimated but will not correspond to real quantities that uh, will describe the, what's happening in the system. And this is applicable to a system of any size. The computing time here is of minor concern because as the steady space matrix grows, so this means as we have more dynamic elements represented in the system, 
then uh, the, the computing burden grows significantly, as we can see in, in this example. In the figure to the right, in the figure to the left, we see how a proper calculation by the algorithm that is selected to do partial eigenvalue calculation will match what of, uh, we will get with a algorithm for full eigenvalue calculation in an example by using a small size system. <clears throat> These methods are available in different uh, simulation softwares and also in, in uh, some commonly used tools uh, for education like MATLAB. We have the command A or EIG in which we can determine the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a uh, state matrix. Uh, be aware that when you use that command, when we get the matrix of the left eigenvectors, these are non-normalized. What does it mean is that these, the, these vectors are not reciprocal terms or are not the inverse of the right eigenvectors. <coughs> then for the partial eigenvalue, by using the Arnoldi method, for instance, we can apply the command EIGS, and then we will get a uh, um, diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues and the matrix of right eigenvectors corresponding to those eigenvalues. And the user has to define, for instance, the initial search point in the complex point. So, in the next slides, I will show an example on the calculation and extraction of this information by using one tool that Francisco and I work very often and for which we have written already in cooperation with other co-authors uh, a couple of books. So we use Power Factory. In Power Factory, in this case I am using the version 2018, you have calculation functions to do the eigenvalue and calculations. We have here uh, the typical icons that we have in the in the software, and then you can choose model analysis, again value analysis among the different functions that the software offers, and then from these once once you can customize which algorithm you want to use. In the basic options, you go to advanced options, then you can customize what you want to calculate. You also want to have the left again value right again left eigenvectors, right eigenvectors, participation factors. And you would like to have uh, some uh, uh, restrictions in the calculation and what type of algorithm is going to be, be used. Once you execute this, you will uh, output this, this information in text files for which you have to define the directory in the output function. So, <clears throat> Going back to the model analysis eigenvalue calculation in, in in Power Factory, once you choose that function and after having customized how you want to do the calculation and export of information, then you will get a window like this one. Once you execute the calculation of the modes, there you will see all the eigenvalues of the system and different information associated to it. We have the real part, the imaginary part, the magnitude angle, frequency, damping, and so on. In this example for the system that we use is the Stuttgaria 4 machine of the chapter 12 of the book by Prabha Kondor. We see, for instance, the, uh, the complex again values 14 and 15 uh, might be associated to an interior mode because of the frequency. 0.5 Hz, which is usually in the range of interior oscillations. And the damping ratio seems to be relatively low, 4%. This is the model, uh, which is uh, built in, in Power Factory. And uh, we can also uh, do some analysis if we want to use the functions in MATLAB, for instance, could also be a, a functions in other uh, programming language to to compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors and compare to what we got in Power Factory. Uh, these are the three steps that we have to do. First, we will import the state matrix as exported from Power Factory. It's usually a file name amat.pmtl. 
and then we will create a full model of the state matrix because we get in a sparse format. And from this uh, full matrix, we calculate the eigenvalues by using the equation MATLAB. So, when we do that, then we can, uh, the next step will be to get the elements of the diagonal of the, uh, the matrix that we obtain by applying the a, a function, and then we can compute the, the, the frequencies and the damping ratios, and then if we can plot this in a common window, we will, we will say something like that for a selected number of eigenvalues, which corresponds, just as we see here, the frequency 0 0.5 and 4% damping ratio with what we got in power factory. So, next steps, we can also check the participation of vectors and participation factors. So, uh, this is how we will do it in, Mat in MATLAB. We get, uh, can plot, these are the commands for, to plot the, <clears throat> the eigenvalues in the complex plane. And we also can, uh, with using the command S create, we can also plot the, <clears throat> the lines that define the, the geometric. Uh, form or region for the uh, given uh, damping threshold in per unit in this case. So we see that our poor, our interior oscillation that we suspect is here and is be between 0 0.5, 0 0.05 0 0 uh, or 0 0.025 in per unit, the damping ratio, also 5% and 2.5%. And we also have a zero <coughs> again value. It's important to keep in mind that these zero eigenvalues uh, are usually due to lack of the unix in the, of the absolute rotor angle, so you may have to program someone in your model to avoid that, to not have this kind of eigenvalues. But also, when that whole generator talks are independent of speed deviation, so when we don't have governor or, or the damping constant of the generator is made zero. Um, we can get similar plot, but now in Power Factory, <coughs> by going to the analysis functions in Power Factory, with this icon that we see here, and uh, uh, choosing the eigenvalue calculation and plotting function, and we will get this in the complex plane, which is somewhat different as in in, in terms of the presentation uh, style, but in terms of information, they do match. Then, if we look at the time response, uh, sorry, this is the simulated time response of, of the power system, and we measure here the electrical output power of the generators. And we, if we apply prone analysis, for instance, in the region like I highlight here, in which the time response looks like the one of a linear system, we will get probably that we have the dominant interior oscillation of around 0 0.5 Hz and also approximately 4% damping ratio. We will check that in the next lecture, but this is important to be aware of, that you should always verify your findings from the linearized uh, approach with uh, an alternative method that could, for instance, check the uh, time domain simulations or the single records if measured. So, <clears throat> Uh, now, for the uh, analysis of the right and left eigenvectors, we need to understand in which way or what is the order of the state variables as defined in the state matrix. Um, Power Factory outputs um, a, 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 a file that we have the name here, which we have the order of the states and which are the states. So we see here, for instance, we have 24 variables and we have six variables describing the a single generator. So it's a six order model. So we hit the variables of the fluxes in the, in the windings and the two variables describe the dynamics of the rotor of the machine, the speed deviation and the uh, rotor angle position. So if we like to plot the, for instance, the, the right and vectors, the entries, the right and the left and vectors, and participation factors, as we did in the example with the introductory part, then we need to know the indexes of these in the order of the equations, which will mean the, the also the order in the entries of the elements of the eigenvectors or participation factors, for instance. 
So this index 5, 11, 17, and 23 should be considered if we want to do further analysis. So we create a vector with these entries. And if we get the vector of, of the, the Riken vector corresponded to the eigenvalue number 13, which is one of the complex, complex pairs that define the integral oscillation, and we put the entries, oh, the vector of entries here to select only the elements of that Riken vector, and we plot this for each of the four elements, then uh, we can see that uh, we have an integral oscillation between these uh, two groups of two generators each. So we can corroborate also this in power factory. Again, we go to the uh, analysis function for uh, model and eigenvalue analysis, and instead of eigenvalue, we choose mod phase or plot. And then we choose the eigenvalue, and the power factor was the number 40. And then we choose here the right hand vector, which is in power factor called it observability. Then uh, we will next have to select the state variables for which we want to plot the right hand vector. In this case, we want to do for the rotor speed as we did in MATLAB. So we click on the selection of the variables, and then we first choose the, 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 the eigenvector, the, the, the eigenvalue from which we're going to select the eigenvector. And then we select the rotor speeds as we did it here. And then Power Factory will do a compass block, which is very similar to what we got in MATLAB. <coughs> so we have an oscillation between two groups of generator, each one having two elements. They are oscillating in antiphase. If we check the time response of each uh, generators, like the output power or the rotor speed, we will see that they, the, 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 the electrical power or the rotor speed of G1 and G2, generators 1 and 2, will be in antiphase with the measured similar responses on the other generators, G3 and G4. Lastly, for the participation factors, then uh, what we can do is then uh, in MATLAB we can compute the left eigen vector, so the normalized one, by inverting the matrix of the right eigen vectors, and then we will multiply uh, the, the corresponding elements of the uh, right and left eigen vectors as we checked before. Then we have a participation vector, and then for instance, as we saw previously, the mode 14 is the one for the inter for interior oscillation. So we previously checked the right hand vector of mode 4 14, and now we do the participation factor of mode 14. And we would like to put the to plot the, the, the magnitude of the speed rotor speed entries of this based on the uh, entries that we defined before for the right hand vectors. Then we do a bar plot here in this case. We see that uh, generators three and four are the most uh, related or the most um, influential on this mode. So I'm, we might add at least a power system stabilizing generator three to try to improve the damping of oscillation. Uh, generator four could be an alternative. We will have uh, a somewhat lesser impact. Um, so we can also check the participation factors and also build a bar plot in, in Power Factory. Again, we go to the model and again value analysis function and select mode bar plot. Similar like the uh, uh, right again vector, we select the, the eigenvalue for which we want the participation vector. And then we select participation vector in the item called shown values. And then we have to select the variables for the participation vector uh, that we want to analyze. Again, we select here, and then we select the rotor speeds, in this case of the four generators. And then we will get a bar plot, which has somewhat rotated the depiction compared to the one we had in, in MATLAB, but is conveying the same information, essentially. So, <clears throat> This is how we will do such analysis by using, in this case, a very popular uh, commercial tool, Power Factory, which is very friendly for academic purposes. Um, damping control now. 
before going to how we apply model analysis in the problem of tuning of uh, stabilizers, it's good to remind what is a, a, a stabilizer, which is the preferred option to increase damping for the oscillations by equipping some devices in the system like synchronous generators, but could also be power electronic converters, in which we add a supplementary feedback loop, which has a given input signals. In the case of generators, it could be the rotor speed of the acceleration power, for instance, and the output will be a signal that is superimposed to the reference of the excitation voltage. This, uh, <laughs> this stabilization feedback loop has a transfer function with different components. So we have a washout filter, we have lift lag compensation on the gain. Simply put, the washout filter is intended to prevent the steady changes in the, in the modulated references. Uh, and usually the value is around 10 seconds for uh, the damping of interior oscillations. Lead lag compensation is intended to compensate phase lead characteristics and the gain is to regulate the amount of damping that will be introduced by the stabilizer. We also um, sometimes need to bound the, 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 the output of the stabilizing feedback loop to avoid undesirable changes. So like to high contributions on the very large uh, uh, swings or to also uh, uh, have some, uh, con some uh, boundaries in the control range in which we want to have this action. The tuning of the stabilizer can be done in different ways. Sometimes it can be done if it's just about a device, like a generator, by using its representation like a single machine infinite boss, and then we can build uh, or apply different techniques like Nyquist criterion, both the criterion and other uh, classical techniques. But when we have a very big system to obtain uh, representation for such analysis is very cumbersome. And one of the most preferred approaches in the recent years is to use uh, an optimization problem formulation to deal with the problem of determining the right parameters of the stabilizer. That means the right gain, the right time constants, and the right limits. Also, could be also to select what is the best input signal, for instance, and where to add the supplementary output signal. The problem can be as complex as we Sorry. So let's see what is meant by complexity. In this case, for instance, we have uh, a, a one type of formulation in which we try to minimize the difference between the damping ratio and its threshold and the and uh, the real part threshold of the, uh, the dominant oscillation and the lower threshold. In this case, we get some penalty factor which will be defined depending on the EBD system. Could be a very high value like 1,000, 1 million, or could be smaller. That it really depends on EBD system. And then we could subject uh, we could subject this to some constraints, which could be the boundaries of the search for the parameters of the of the uh, stabilizer that could be, for instance, for the gains, for the uh, time constants of the lead lag filters, and so on. Uh, this function uh, of the decision function twenty in this case, for instance, could be confined to have only the dominant oscillations. Equations 21 and 22 are meant to screen among the number of uh, modes in the system uh, in the terms between the, 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 the brackets and among different scenarios. So we could make it uh, for only for the dominant oscillatory modes and among a number of scenarios. We could also uh, have a different formulation like in the four in which we will only be checking on the real part. But before that, let's look at what we will be doing during an optimization search. So we are, by doing this problem formulation, as we saw before, we are searching or trying to confine the eigenvalues to the so-called D-shaped region, which is defined by the thresholds of the real part and the damping ratio. So we are trying to put by having a proper optimization, so we have a good solver and a good formulation, a good, uh, well-defined set of parameters, trying to push it towards this region, trying to prevent the eigenvalues lying on the on the vertical axis, which means sustained oscillations, or outside it, which will mean poorly damped behavior. That looks fine, but depending on how the search goes, it might happen that we might have some oscillatory modes that lie just on the boundaries, 
and some of these modes might be so of relatively high frequency, which will be undecidable for, for the dynamic system point of view. If we neglect the damping ratio part, then we will be then trying to confine the eigenvalues just to the left of the imaginary part threshold we will put. But this means we might have, depending on how many oscillations we have in the system, only one threshold considered. So, and also the risk of having even modes of higher frequency just in the boundary. And if I uh, change the system, of course, in a scenario that we didn't consider, we might have again poorly damped oscillations. So we have to be more careful in the second case in which we neglect the damping ratios. This is more, uh, it could have some uh, risks that are unforeseen during the tuning, especially after commissioning the stabilizer. We could have an additional constraint that if you have other modes present in the system and we would like them to be disturbed, so to change the oscillation frequencies, because this could also disturb the, the task of damping other modes in another uh, oscillation domain, then uh, um, uh, we could add a constraint in our situation program to try to minimize the deviations of the frequency of these modes with respect to an allowable uh, threshold for these deviations. If we neglect the real part in the optimization function, then we are confined just to this fan-shaped region. So we have this threshold of damping always starting from the origin. That is also fine because we are trying to, to push the eigenvalues to be well damped to have a good damping ratio, which can be defined as a unique metric for all modes, unlike the real part. In real part, we have to define for each oscillation frequency one threshold, usually, in the case of uh, damping ratios not. Then uh, 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 these uh, eigenvalues, when doing the search, the, the main reason we might have is that we might have eigenvalues that are very close to the boundary or the threshold, which are of very low frequency. So in case a problem occurs in the system in a condition that was not considered in the design, and it happens that a disturbance made to, to, to exit the, this region, then we have a big problem because it will be a very low frequency oscillation, which is more complicated to damp. And then we may have again problems of damp oscillations or poorly damp oscillations in the systems. So that is the risk of this kind of formulation. In recent times, there was another formulation which tries to take into account that the <coughs> fan shaped region is um, a desired one, but not to start at the origin. <coughs> so some authors what did they, they, they shifted the origin of the, the, the fan shaped region by shifting this threshold region or the like value by a given threshold we see in this equation 29. So it's just a shifted, uh, we're shifting the again values by a threshold quantity. That will be, in this case, the best uh, solution because then we are prevented to have risk due to high or, be, or very low frequency modes that may be risky in case of <clears throat> unexpected uh, re reactions in unforeseen uh, design of uh, operational scenarios and disturbances. <clears throat> and then, uh, to finalize this presentation, then we have the topic of wide area damping control, in which we can have a stabilizing feedback loop, like the one we saw, but in this case, having an input signal coming from other locations. These input signals can, can come from facial machine units. And we have two problems here. One is the selection of the control input output, so from which location in a wider area. And again, like in the case of local damping controller, how we should tune it <laughs> to be robust. The problem control input selection is what we're going to do here now to finalize because the tuning is, is similarly as we did before for the start classical power system stabilizer. There are different approaches also to do the controlled input and output selection. Some authors do it based on the residues and others do it on the so-called geometric measures. The geometric measure is basically taking into account the elements of the left eigen vectors and of the input matrix in the state presentation model. Sorry, on the, on the, output, uh, mat the, the output matrix C. Then, by doing the by computing the projection between these two vectors, we are getting a flavor on the observability of this mode in a signal. So, how 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 more, how how rich will be the dynamic information we get by measuring this variable and passing it as an input signal to our uh, wide area damping controller? 
Controllability is uh, some analog term, but in this case we have the, the Riken vectors and the, the elements of the input matrix. So we are analyzing the extent of the projections to check how how effective will be our control, uh, whether they're controlling the system. And there's a, a, a joint measure that is called uh, observability and controllability measure. So it's basically just the multiplication of the other two measures we, I just described. Um, just to uh, emphasize something before I finish, um, uh, some, it should be avoided to confuse that, uh, to have the confusion that by just looking at the right eigenvectors, it will be enough for controllability, or just looking at the left eigenvectors, it will be enough for observability. We need to take into account what we, we are using to define in, in terms of the inputs, input matrix, and the output matrix. So, because this is important to um, to really and properly quantify the effect of any decided uh, measurement and any decided uh, modification in a given device and the relation to what is happening dynamically in the system, which is affected by the left and the right eigenvectors. You can click on this uh, link here from the PDF that Francisco will share with you to read a paper in which I uh, with my former mentor, Professor Early, when I was working in Germany, we did a very extensive analysis from a probabilistic point of view to understand what happens with the observability and controllability under varying conditions with respect to the effectiveness of cell or, or the, 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 the quality of the information that is provided by defining different types of feedback loops. This is how we will uh, visualize it. And as I said before, uh, the problem is about, uh, um, in the case of tuning, just finding the right the times constants. We can also consider some time delay to take into account in this design to make it more complicated and also more realistic because the time delay can significantly lower the impact on the oscillations by a supplementary wide area dumping control loop. And this can be, as we did in the previous slides, 36 to 38 by an optimization problem. And remember, having a shifted uh, fine shape review could be uh, more convenient. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I am looking forward to questions. Free feel to mail me. And yeah, I will share more uh, information in this in the next lecture about measurement based approach. Thank you very much, Jose Luis, uh, Professor Reda. Thank you very much for, for this beautiful and amazing presentation. It's lovely to see uh, these kind of topics, small signal stability, rotor angle stability, using eigenvalues analysis. Um, thank you very much for, uh, for taking the time and sharing with us your knowledge. I hope uh, all my students and all people here in YouTube, uh, they, they appreciate the effort that we put here in order to share our knowledge. Um, thank you very much for, for this. Um, uh, I would like to say that Professor Jose Luis Rueda will be again with us with the second part of this presentation and using Prony analysis. We are expecting to upload the video in the next few days. Uh, please stay tuned in the channel because also we will have um, uh, more, more participants, uh, more brilliant people presenting very important topics in advanced power system analysis. Thank you very much for watching again. Please, if you if you feel uh, if if you feel that you have any question, please uh, contact directly Professor Jose Luis Rueda, or even send me one email and I can make the contact. Okay, and if you if you like the video, please subscribe and stay tuned. Thank you very much for watching the video. Thank you again, Jose Luis, for your support, and see you around. Thank you.